evening, I'd like to welcome everybody. It's 2026. Tim, October 26, 2017, Brickland meeting at the United City Council. This time, we will say anything in the Anton is going to post in our, give our indication. Everybody, please stand with us. All right. You guys invited me back. Yeah. Congratulations. We're friends. All right. <laughs> um, I always like to open with scripture, and Proverbs 15, 22 says, Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. And uh, again, I just want to say thank you to you guys for, uh, you know, volunteering your time and being part of public service and being a part of the answer. You know, it's easy to recognize problems and uh, talk about them and and uh, just not be happy with the way things are, but it really takes guts to come and be a part of the solution. So again, thank you guys for your service. We really appreciate it. Thanks. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today in the name of your son, Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you so, so much for another day on earth. And Lord, any time we wake up, there's purpose for our lives and, and there's purpose for our lives tonight in this room. And I pray that you would be with the council this evening. I pray that your divine wisdom would be imparted into each member of this council and also to the people who are here tonight with issues and, and concerns. Lord, I pray that uh, they've been brought to you first and that they've seeked your will before they bring these things forward to council. And uh, Lord, again, I ask for your spirit to just be in this place tonight. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come in and that that your divine will would be done in Guyman, Oklahoma, that the things that you see fit would be brought to pass, Lord, and anything that is not of you, that it would be cast down and thrown away. Lord, we love you, and there's a reason we come before you first and foremost before we make decisions uh, for this city. Lord, we want your will. We, we want the city to prosper. We want the citizens of Guyman to know what holiness is and to live a lifestyle that would honor you. And Lord, uh, Again, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to be here tonight. I thank you for each and every single person that's in attendance this evening. And uh, just may your plans go forth, Lord God. May your wisdom uh, shed light on every situation that's brought to them. And Lord, I thank you again for the men and women who serve our communities. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mr. Mitchell, would you lead our pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Paul, we're going to start with the Guyman Utilities Authority. Paul the Director of the Guyman Utilities Authority. To order. Agenda item number two is approval of the consent agenda. Make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Have a motion and a second. Swager. Aye. Crime. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Living Good. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We have five ayes. Agenda item number three is public comments and announcements. I mean, public comments and announcements. Well, David's going to, uh, you can go ahead. He's got a kind of a city announcement, and then we'll get to you, Austin. Just, just a quick reminder. Uh, we put a little bit of information out, but uh, the transfer station is open in the summertime hours on the weekends. But during the wintertime, from November to April, we are closed. And so this lack, last, this coming weekend will be the last weekend open for Saturdays. Uh, so we did a uh, cleanup day like we did in the spring. We had very good turnout. People wanted to clean up their properties. Um, and around town so we'll have a cleanup day that will be free like it was before uh, we had pickup locations at the activity center this spring we had staff on hand and we'll do that again have staff on hand if somebody comes up and uh, they have trouble unloading some things we'll unload those for them and take those uh, at no charge at the activity center or at the transfer station so I just wanted to let y'all know as well you guys didn't wear costumes we're not going to wear costumes. <laughs> Anybody else? Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council. If, if you'd introduce yourself for the record for her. And 
I'm Austin Boring, a member of the community. Um, recently, I've been reviewing the, uh, the uh, contract between City of Guyman and IBTS, and there's a lot of troubling things that I came across that concerns me. Um, a, the amount of money that's being paid out to them and the way the services are being provided. Um, little things like leasing them our equipment and facilities for a dollar a year, us providing the fuel for it by the city, little things like that. Um, I'd like to see some more accountability um, and I would like to, and I'd welcome members of the council to visit with me about my concerns with IBTS and how it influences the direction of our city. Um, I've had a lot of feedback and hasn't been very positive. And I, I'd like to hear some of the positive aspects of it because I haven't heard from people directly involved with IBTS and the city council of how IBTS is positively affecting our community. But again, in reviewing these numbers, I would just like to see some more accountability from our city council and IBTS as to how our funds are being spent. And I welcome that anytime you all like to give me a call and visit with me or meet with me. I welcome that opportunity. That's all I got. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments or announcements? Agenda item number four is discussion and possible action on approval of change order number one for D, B, and E for an increase of $5,290 on the water well 23R project. This is the one we had last week that was had a mistake. I'll make a motion that we approve change order number one for D, B, and E for an increase of $5,290 on the water well 23R project. Second. Have a motion and a second. Living good? Aye. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have five eyes. Is there any new business? For the utilities for any new business. Stand adjourned mm -hmm. from the Guyman Utility Authority. We'll reconvene as the Guyman City Council. Agenda item number one is called to order. Uh, the agenda, excuse me, agenda item number two is attendance roll call. I already called it. Peterson? Here. Swager? Here. Crone? Here. Alvedras? Here. Living Good? Here. Hawkins? Mr. Petty? Here. Mr. Mitchell? Here. And Sally's in California attending a wedding. So that's where she's at. Uh, any public comments and announcements? Agenda item number five. Oh, oh yes. Mr. Colson, I'm sorry, I wasn't even looking. No, you didn't not. stand up quick enough. <laughs> you're really not sorry, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I've just got <clears throat> I've just got some questions. Uh, we live in a relatively small town. You hear rumors, you hear facts, you don't know rumors from facts. I've just got some questions I'd like to clear up tonight. And I feel like this is the place to do it, that y'all can give us facts and and whether or not what we're hearing is actually rumors or not. Uh, question number one, is there now a $25 permit for trimming your trees? Well, Ken, since this is, since this is public comments and it's not an agenda item, we can't give you answers. But if you'll sit down with Mr. Clapsaddle back there he'll answer any of those questions on on those fees okay well on that question what are the right i mean we can't interact with you but what are your other questions yeah go ahead and ask the questions get let us know well um, proposed ordinances is this the time to discuss that or not you can you can talk about it we just can't interact with you but you go ahead and, and tell us what's on your mind Okay, well, I was just wondering a proposed ordinance on smoking and uh, chewing on municipal property. Just curious, does this affect uh, golf course? Does it affect the parks? Does it affect walking down Main Street smoking a cigarette? How's it gonna be enforced? Who's gonna enforce it? Is there gonna be a fine for it? Uh, as far as I know, none of this has been let out to the public. If it has, 
I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, another question I had was about the variance board not being allowed to do their job. These people, we just lost close to 80 years of experience last night on the variance board from people that have left. Uh, these are people that volunteered their time. They weren't getting paid, they volunteered their time. Just curious as to why that happened. Uh, and I have a suggestion. It's, I don't guess it's so much a question as a suggestion. <coughs> Understand now whenever they have, somebody has a garage sale, they can't put a garage sale sign anywhere except in their front yard. Now, I understand part of the reason behind that because there were signs getting stuck up all over town and were never being picked up. My suggestion on that would be we have a lot of people in town that don't speak or read English, that don't take the Gaiman Daily Herald, that don't know where the garage sales are being had unless they see a sign. My suggestion would be that we be allowed to put garage sales on, not, not me included, I don't do garage sales. But my suggestion would be that they'd be able to put them up, and if they're not taken down within 24 hours after the end of the garage sale, take them down and find them so much per sign for leaving them up. That way the people that are looking for garage sales are still able to find them, but the people that have the garage sales are responsible for getting their signs down. I guess that's all I got to say. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to, your answer, your question about the smoking ordinance, that is on the, the council agenda for tonight. So if you stick around, you'll hear that discussion. Okay. okay. Any more? Any, any other public comments or now? Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is J.D. Carrillo, and I was here yesterday with uh, the committee uh, asking for a, a variance permit for a carport. And, I mean, my question is, um, I thought we were going to get a fair hearing, and we were just going to hear back from the committee in regards to the approval or denial of that one. <coughs> the committee quit in the middle of our meeting. <laughs> so we were left just hanging. We don't know. We, I mean, we were actually advised that since nobody made a motion and everybody left, it was a denial. But I went over the ordinance book and on there, I mean, it says that you have to have the committee and you have to have at least three votes to see if it's gonna be approved or not. It doesn't say anything about nobody making a, a motion and quitting or just leaving you hanging. Um, I'm just, I still, I don't know where to go. I don't know who to talk to. I still in the limbo. <laughs> and possibly I cannot get the answers right now. I just really want to be heard and, you know, just. You are being heard right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, I, I usually don't, I'm one of those persons that really don't, I guess I should go out more and talk to more people, but, um, I have never attended to one of these meetings. I really, I was just kind of be guided as I went. And then when everything fell apart yesterday, we were just kind of like, we're doing what we're supposed to, but then everybody quits in the middle of it. So, yeah. I will. Mr. Mitchell, do you have, do you have a response? Or well, really? um, We've got your address and your information. I guess we'll yeah. would be we, in contact. We have the application you. still in the yeah. planning department. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was advised. Obviously, now that four of the five resigned, uh, we'll have to reconstitute the board, and we've asked whether or not that board can be combined with the planning commission, so so the planning commission can serve as the board of adjustment. Yeah, and I think I think that's a that the answer to that is yes. So we'll have to reconstitute. Board of Adjustment before we can uh, have a meeting and, and hear cases. Yeah, I mean, they told us that we had the right to appeal the decision, you which there was not a decision. 
but they um, they said that we had the right to appeal, which meant sub resubmit the application and pay the $400 fee again. Um, we were here at 10 a.m. and our meeting, everything concluded at 10.30. But in, the, in, in between, I mean, everybody left. There was no motion and I was advised that there was no motion, therefore it was gonna be denied. Well, you weren't the only one that was surprised. Uh, I, I didn't know what was going on. Everybody just got up and left. <laughs> but um, like I said, I mean, it just kind of got us off guard and left us hanging. And we just want some answers. I mean, we've been living in Gaiman for a long time, and I plan to stay here. And, you know, I mean, it's, I know it's a carport. Maybe it's not a huge deal. But, you know, we want to keep our family safe, keep our home safe, keep our vehicle safe that we have work or bots off for, you know, to have stuff. And um, like I said, I mean, we just want to do what's right, but at the same time, we also want to be heard. And you were looking considered. For an <laughs> you were looking for an answer yesterday. Yeah, and I mean, uh, at least a little bit of consideration. It's $400, I, it's, it's a week's worth of, you know, at the plan, that's where you get a week, so. We'll, we'll give you a response. Well, I appreciate it. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank you. Any other public comments and announcements? Mayor, can you comment on that variance? Just come on. As a member of the Planning Commission, with the situation that's happened with the Variance Committee, in most municipalities, um, the Variance <coughs> Committee is also part of the Planning Commission. Um, they pretty much sit on the same panels. Um, I haven't spoken to the other members of the Planning Commission, but I think maybe the City Council should take into consideration of tempor temporarily merging those two committees and calling into an executive session with the Planning Commission and getting situations like this handled. That's Thank, all you. Thank you. Any other public comments on that? All right, agenda <clears throat> item number five is discussion and possible action on approval of resolution number 17-16, resolution authorizing the calling and holding of an election in the city of Guyman, Texas County, state of Oklahoma, for the purpose of submitting to the registered, registered qualified voters of said city the question of increasing the city hotel and motel sales tax from 3% to 8%, in addition to all of the city and state sales tax levied or, or assessed upon the gross receipts derived from rents received from occupancy of hotel or motel rooms in the city of Guyman, Oklahoma. Resolution is attached and uh, lodged surveys up there. Is there any discussion? Yeah. We have I, don't, I think the public should know some of the lodge tax that was the surveying that was done around the area. Uh, Woodward's is at 6%, Enid's 8%, Amarillo, Texas is 9% plus an additional 6% for state lodging. Uh, Liberal is 6% uh, but their total tax lodging tax for survey, our number is 17.25%. Muskogee is at 8%. Uh, so you can see with we being at three, uh, and we can use this revenue for uh, the city, for instance, like part of it we could uh, contribute to the soccer field fund or, or things like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's not a tax on the people of Guymon. It's a tax on the people that stay in Guymon for overnight or two or three nights. So I think that's important that you understand that aspect of what we're talking about. Okay. Any other comments? I'll make a motion we approve resolution number 17-16, resolution authorizing the calling and holding of election in the city of Guymon, Texas County, state of Oklahoma. For the purpose of submitting the uh, <coughs> Registered qualified voters have said city, the question of increasing city hotel and motel tax from 3% to 8% in addition to all other city and state sales taxes levied and assessed upon 
gross receipts derived from rents received from occupancy hotel or motel rooms of the city of Guymon, Oklahoma. I wish I hadn't made that motion. <laughs> second. I have a motion and a second. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Crone? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have five ayes. I'd like to make a motion to amend the date on that resolution, number 17-16. It right now states October 10th, uh, 2017, and I'd like to have that date changed to February 13th of 2018. That is the correct date, the February date in the motion, in the resolution that was sent over the incorrect Earlier resolution okay. was sent out to you. Okay. Yeah. So we don't need to Good vote on so. Yeah. The, 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 re Good the current date in this resolution number is February 13th. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Agenda item number six is discussion and possible action on approval of ordinance number 826, an ordinance amending part eight, chapter eight, smoking in public places, municipal property, indoor and outdoor, and regulating the use of tobacco and vapor. <coughs> Projects, providing for severability, repealing all ordinances con in conflict herewith, and declaring an emergency. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Dave Clapp, Saddle Planning Director <clears throat> for the City of Guyman. <clears throat> in your uh, staff report, we outline uh, the reasons for enacting this ordinance. We, <clears throat> we have provided backup to talk about the easeables of the problems with smoking and secondhand smoke relating to the overall health, safety, and welfare of our current generation and future generations who are going to live and work and play at Guymon. The comprehensive plan that we did in April <clears throat> talks about providing a healthy living action plan. There's going to be a lot of steps <coughs> to that, but this is the first one that we're proposing that you take tonight. This would prohibit smoking outdoors in uh, municipally owned properties. We have taken the current, the, the previously approved smoking ordinances that have been approved by the council. We've combined this idea into those. So now there is one smoking ordinance that people could go to to learn about uh, smoking rules within the city of Guymon. <clears throat> um, I'd like to take some time um, <clears throat> to rebut, sorry, but I've got uh, a little bit of a scratchy throat tonight, so <clears throat> hang in there. Um, I'd like to take a little bit of time to reserve in case we have people who want to speak against the ordinance, but Caleb McCarter is also here this evening uh, with the um, Texas County Health Department. So with that, let me step back, and if there's anybody who wants to speak about the ordinance side, um, I'd like to have the ability to come back and and talk after they after we do. Any discussion? Mr. Carter? Well, not be a good time to have your questions answered as far as does that mean not smoking on city streets? Uh, any pub any any property owned by the city of Diamond. The golf course, parks city hall <clears throat> um, but if you're walking up and down the sidewalk <clears throat> no i would not say that these sidewalks are not owned by the city so correct me say, correct me if i'm wrong oklahoma statutes already state that it's illegal to smoke in public places whether indoor or outdoor if it's not <clears throat> let me let me call on kayla about that she would have a better Knowledge of. Sorry, you that? Oh, in the Oklahoma statutes I was looking at, it's a, it's against Oklahoma law to be to smoke in a public place, whether it be indoor or outdoor. Um, right now, it states that only indoor. 2006, we passed the clean indoor air. Okay. So you couldn't, you know, walk in here and smoke. Um, now the state did go in and adopt tobacco-free. Um, state-owned and operated properties as like our health department it is completely tobacco free you cannot be using um, vaping devices smokeless tobacco cigarettes on like our health department property same way if you're up at the state capitol um, and there's some other locations throughout Oklahoma City 
and well, even here in the DHS, um, DHS office, their properties. So anything that is state owned, um, you cannot use tobacco products. And so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to, you know, go in and pass city owned and operated properties. Um, we do, currently you guys do have a couple contracts with a couple of private entities that you do lease out the land to, and they have went in and voluntarily passed tobacco free properties um, that stick with their entity. So, I mean, we do have a lot of positive um, feedback from it. We do have a lot of buy-in. This is just a step closer to protecting the health and improving the quality of life of the citizens of Guyman. This will help the city with uh, TSEC grants in the future, correct? Correct. Um, in, earlier, it was mentioned that um, the community hadn't heard anything about this. We have been working on this for seven years. Um, we started out small. We were only going to do smoke-free in the parks. That was one of the grant criteria. Um, it did not pass. However, as the years go by, new studies come out. And so that's why we're going in and trying to do tobacco-free. One of the criteria, which is the highest criteria, um, is that we have to have a tobacco-free city owned and operated properties. Granted, there are incentive grant monies that are attached to that, but that's not the sole reason behind what we're trying to do here. We are trying to take a step to improve the quality of life of our community and protecting our citizens um, and providing them with clean air in our parks, um, in our areas that are kind of deemed to improve quality of life, such as our golf course. Could you, could you Tell us how many other communities have adopted these ordinances, how many other communities are in the program? I believe we're over 200. I don't want to be exact on that. Um, the closest one is Woodward. Woodward did pass. We have Alva and Altus. Um, those were big. I thought Hook, was Hooker, Hooker, did too. Too. Hooker did not pass a tobacco-free one. They did go in and pass a smoke-free. Um, smoke we have contacted many of the communities and we've just kind of picked their brains of, you know, how did you guys implement? How, how was your feedback from your community? Um, I did share that with you guys when I did meet with you. Um, so far, there has not been a lot of negative towards, uh, communities have not had a hard pro a problem with implementing this at all. Okay. You said 200? It was over 200, yes. Yeah. In your backup is a list of the cities that have approved these ordinances. And we've actually, like Hooker, they are going to apply for certified healthy, and they're going to go in and apply for the lower level. Um, Guyman has already took, taken the steps with certified healthy. They've already been funded for the first level and the second level. Now we're ready to reach that third level, and that's where this criteria comes <coughs> in. Um, so, I mean, it is a, it's a plus to what we're trying to do, but it's not the sole reason for why we're trying to move forward with this. Um, we did pass the comprehensive plan in, in April, and um, it is just a guide for us. Um, we did have OU come in, and a lot of the stuff that we got with the design works, it is moving to an active lifestyle, style, a healthier lifestyle. And so this is just one of those com additional components. People will still be able to smoke, just not on city property. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I mean, we're not like Denver. We're not having, you know, we cannot go completely smoke free. Right. We have prevention. We can't have local laws that are more strict than what our state laws are. So it's not like, you know, you can't smoke at all or use tobacco products at all. There's just some areas that you're just not able to um, do that. And we would, through the implementation, that's why I'm here. If it is passed, I'm gonna walk with you hand in hand. Um, there is no cost to the city. We are going to purchase the signage um, <clears throat> locally through our local grant budget. So we will go in and we will identify um, places that we need to put the signage. And with that, we should have about a 95% compliance. We're not going to, as far as enforcement, uh, be strong arm, I guess. No, not, and that's, no. A, that's another thing. We're not after the tobacco user. By no means, that's not what we're trying to do here. Trying um, to educate. We're trying to educate. We're trying to change that social that social norm change. Um, plus, provide our children with um, you know a healthier healthier air, clean and clean air. 
Um, it's not one of those things that if David's over here smoking, then we're going to be calling the police. Um, there are steps that we can take and we're going to do that through the implementation. However, if we have one of those individuals that is just completely not in compliance and will not listen, then we are able to, by state statute, go up and find up to a hundred dollars. And so we do have teeth with this ordinance, but that's not, we're not trying to strong arm it. I mean, <clears throat> our police department has a lot more to do um, than go arrest somebody that might be smoking. <clears throat> There's also a side benefit in that you don't have the problem of uh, cigarette butts all over your parks and Correct. public places. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And then, um, you know, smokeless tobacco, same thing. I mean, it has bacteria. It's debris. It, you know, it's gross. And <laughs> so, I mean, just like that, it's the same with the cigarette butts. Guilty. Any other? Yeah, I'd like to uh, address this. Go right ahead. Um, I never took speech and debate, so I took the liberty of writing down my thoughts so that I could, and I'm going to read them. Uh, I'm against this ordinance, and it has nothing to do with tobacco. I would feel the same way if we were debating bottled water. When this ordinance is presented to the people by title, most say, yes, that sounds like a good idea. When I point out to them that it encompasses all municipal property, including the golf course, the parks, the city parking lots, the alleys, yes, even the streets, easements, all city property, suddenly they start talking about government interference. I would also like to point out that this ordinance has nothing to do with tobacco use on private property. For instance, when you are walking into a store and the smoking area is a few feet from the doorway, you're still going to experience that. In my opinion, this ordinance is in its present form is unenforceable or at least extremely hard to enforce. I've been told by some city administrators that we have no intention of enforcing it. Others have said we don't intend to be the tobacco police, so, but we'll simply stop and say, you aren't supposed to be doing that. As I see it, we are intentionally presenting an ordinance that we don't intend to enforce simply because the larger entity, TSET, or the TAC Tobacco Settlement Endowment Trust, a public trust of the state of Oklahoma, would like us to and is dangling a possible monetary grant under our nose to influence us. As for the intent of the ordinance, <clears throat> I've been told that the sole intent is to educate the public to help us have a healthier city. That's all well and good, but the present city administrator, including the five of us sitting up here tonight, are not going to be here forever. Once this ordinance passes, administration down the line can interpret it any way they want to interpret it and start enforcing it to the letter if they so choose. Intent is out the window. I asked my fellow councilmen who play golf, and when one of your group pulls out a cigarette, a cigar, a can of smokeless tobacco, are you going to stop and say, you're not allowed to do that on municipal property? I proposed a compromise to Mr. Clapsaddle and Ms. McCarter when they presented the ordinance to me. The compromise designated some areas as tobacco free and exempted the golf course and most of Thompson Park other than around the playground area. I actually wanted more exemptions, but this was a compromise and I was trying to compromise. I was told that in order to get the grant, it had to be all municipal property. I feel this is that the only way this ordinance would be fair to all citizens of Guyman would be to include reasonable exemptions. I ask that my fellow councilman and I do not pass this tonight without being rewritten. What would your reasonable exemptions be? Um, the one that I settled on was um, exempting the playground area uh, on the east side of Thompson Park, Sunset Lake, uh, that would allow, let's say, roughly from the little train depot going north to the um, what used to be the Demolay Monument Hill, uh, the, where the Boy Scouts have that little bridge going across the water coming in. That area would be smoke free. The exemption would be around the rest of the lake where people could go and fish. I've uh, observed most of the recreation on the west side of the lake. 
is mostly adults uh, playing. I'm not saying that there's no kids over there, <coughs> but I am saying it's mostly adults. You know, they're playing basketball or they're playing soccer or having a picnic or whatever. Um, but uh, people can sit down there and fish and use their tobacco if they want to. That was the exemption that I asked for. And we did, we had really good, like, that was a good meeting. We had a really good discussion on that. Um, and Mr. Crow did, you know, mention going in and exempting those areas. Um, one of the things that, you know, I had expressed my concern with you was, um, I use the example of Denver, like you walk through Denver and they have designated areas where people don't know where you can and cannot use, and then it just becomes, everybody's just going everywhere. And so that example was used. And then also whenever we were discussing about um, Thompson Park, <clears throat> we were talking about one area is where a lot of our individuals are fishing and then our kids are playing on the other side. I had expressed a concern where when I go look at Thompson Park, I don't look at it as a divided situation. I don't look at it as it's this side is where adults can play and this side is where children can play. So that's where that was not, we didn't go in and change that. When I look at Thompson Park, I feel like everybody is enjoying the park fully at 110%. Um, it's not divided. So why we didn't come off of that is because I mean, I would like to provide a tobacco-free park where everybody is enjoying clean air, no exposure to secondhand smoke, um, or to any of that tobacco debris. But I, I do appreciate your, that was a very good meeting that we had. I do remember when, which park was it that you wanted to put in oh this. I just wanted that one one which park one <laughs> which one was it? I don't remember. Um, it was cross park, cross park. <coughs> and uh, at the time I, you know I, I can only speak for myself but I know it was voted down and part of the reason I remember it was being voted down was the concern of uh, big government telling us what to do or not to do well I can tell you that um, you can look at it two ways. I mean, I'm a taxpayer, I'm invested. This is my home. This is where I'm raising my kids. Um, I have an amazing wellness group that is working on active transportation right now. And they are working to better our community because they're invested. This is where they're raising their kids. And we're just trying to improve the quality of life in Guymon. And it, it is, it's a huge change. It is, it's scary but um, we do have resources and what do you just... say to the smoker that's tried to quit actually um, 900 times for instance well, and he's still you know he's not going to quit because there's a sign no, no he's not going to quit but, no, so I'm... what are you going to say to that gentleman that's not bothering anybody that's got a fishing pole in the water and has got a cigarette in his mouth well, I mean, we do have resources. We have the Oklahoma Quit Line. Um, we are going to be providing that left and right everywhere. Um, Mr. Crow, we talked about that. And I said, you know, if I get that phone call, hey, somebody's smoking, I'm not going to immediately call and report something. You know, I'd probably drive down there to Thompson Park and sit there and provide that Quit Line information. We are going to provide a resource for those that would like to quit smoking like to quit using tobacco products. You know, there's been studies that says smoking's harder to quit than heroin. It is. I believe that, yes. 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 So yes. what we're trying to do here is provide a healthier gaiman for <coughs> our upcoming citizens, so, our little ones. See, my concern is that that gentleman that has fished that one spot for 20 years and has tried to quit smoking, you know, and he just can't get over the hump. And he sat down, like I said, do, mind his own business. And we're going to tell him, no, you can't do that after 20 years of doing it. I, I he, think he, we. He, he can. Yeah. He just can't in that spot. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to tell him, like, I mean, we, you can. We're not saying you, you're a bad person, you're using tobacco. He can't. He, just not in that spot. There's designated spots where you just can't if this passes. I. I think we understood when we started this that this wasn't going to be easy, that this was going to be a tough first step to take. But we know we're in this for the long haul, and we know 
behavior, changes in behavior take time. There was <clears throat> once a day that um, we used to be able to walk into an airplane and you would get on our airplane and there would be a smoking section <clears throat> in the back of the plane. And we thought for a long, long time that that was fine. That was a good idea. That was in the back. Today, nobody thinks that that's a good idea. I don't think anybody, you talk to your kids about that, you what? Because they change, they learn, and the next generation learns. And I think the same thing will happen here. I think there's gonna be a day when our grandkids are gonna be on the fourth hole out here at Sunset Lake, 200 yards, trying to figure out how to get their sand wedges there. And they're gonna say, you know, grandpa told me once that they used to allow smoking on the golf course where this was supposed to be a healthy recreational place. And they're, they're gonna go, huh, oh, <coughs> imagine that. And I think that's gonna happen. And I think that this is the first step to making that happen. And without any additional questions or comments, we would just respectfully ask for your approval. Since we're trying to make a healthier community, uh, once we get this passed, uh, what are you going to come to us and ask us to outlaw to combat obesity. Well, that's a huge epidemic exactly. that we're fighting right now, and how we're going to counteract that. Counteract that is what we're, the strategies we're trying to put in place with active transportation. Walking trails. Walking trails. Um, I have some pictures if you would like to see them. Um, <laughs> you know, shared lanes where you know you can actually have a safe path to walk and bike. So we are we are working on that. But I mean, we—that's a whole nother. What you're talking about there, and with this tobacco use, is if somebody is going to go in and and eat in their that, that's that's and not have healthy nutrition, but have an active lifestyle. That is only affecting that individual. But when you're talking about tobacco use and especially smoking, that affects those that are around you. That I mean, that's secondhand smoke. Um, there was once there I presented to the city of Guymon, it was compared, well, if you come in and take away the smoking and I can't go in and smoke at our parks, what are you going to do next? Are you going to take away your, you know, my salt? Like, can I still go? That was what was compared. You know, are you going to come in and limit the salt intake that we, you know, use at the parks? And, you know, the counter on that is your salt consumption does not affect me. But Why did the city of New York and Chicago pass Town. Soda taxes on I mean, anything above no, a 12 I, to be an ounce. Honesty, it was back to the obesity, and it was another way to raise revenue. Yeah, I, I have no clue. I, I don't. I work in solely in Oklahoma and working on our 2020 plan and improving the quality of life right. and the health of Oklahoma. Well, most <clears throat> this last week, and had a visit with Mr. Crone. And Mr. Crone says, Why don't you? Uh, poll some of your citizens, get their take. And, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes to just do that, but I made a few phone calls. I stopped and visited with folks. First off, most of them, it's kind of hard to, anymore, it's kind of hard to run across somebody that smokes. And that group I didn't to speak of. There were a lot of them that had, had in the past, because mm -hmm. they have a lot of people. Most of it was pretty much, what's one was, really doesn't matter to me, but when you bring the kids into it, maybe it's not a bad deal. But you know, if I want to smoke, there's places I can go smoke. I don't have to sit out there. So it's pretty much indifference. It was one way or the other. But most people said, you know, I've, I've adjusted my life. If I, you know, if, if somebody wants to smoke, they'll find a place to do it. They'll get out of the way, whatever. And I think uh, probably the consideration most of them made was, you know, to, to have a healthy place for our for the kids and an example for the kids. Do you have any questions? Like any more questions? Yeah. Or? Thank and you. I do appreciate all your all's time. It was great. It, it really was. Got a lot of um, good feedback and I really appreciate it. Now you did have public hearings for this, correct? Um, not on specifically on this one. We've been working on the whole like active transportation, quality of life, healthy living, and through those steps we did um, 
like with the comprehensive plan, I mean, I know you guys were part of it with uh, OU coming in. Of, of course, we completely always want the community. Feedback. I mean, yeah, we want that back. Did you get any feedback on this? I mean. Yes, I am surround, I'm really, really surrounded by a lot of healthy living right. individuals. And even, you know, Mr. Peterson made a perfect, um, I mean, that was perfect. A lot of the ones that I do know that are smoking, I'm like, hey, what do you think? And they're golfers. So, like, picking their brains, what do you think? And they're just like, well, I mean, we'll just find a place where we can. It, it, it really wasn't, I think I was making it out to be a bigger deal than what I thought they were going to handle it. But, no, they, they simply said, well, we'll find a place where we can smoke, where we can shoot. Any other questions, discussion? Although Mr. Crone had a very eloquent delivery, I, I believe in this, so I'm going to make a motion that we approve ordinance number 826, ordinance amended part 8, chapter 8, smoking in public places, municipal property, indoor and outdoor, and regulating the use of tobacco and vape products, providing for severability, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, and declaring an emergency item 6. Second. I have a motion and a second. Cron? Nay. Swagger? Nay. Alvedras? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got three ayes and two nays. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> emergency? I'll make a motion that we declare it an emergency item six. Second. I have a motion and a second. Swagger? <clears throat> well, I voted nay on the other one, so I guess I'll vote nay now. <laughs> Crime? <laughs> no. Yes. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have three ayes and three nays. Agenda item number seven is discussion and possible action on approval of ordinance number 827, an ordinance regulating food truck and food truck sales court operations, establishing requirements and regulations, providing for severability. Repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith and declaring an emergency. Mr. Clapp. Mayor, Council, uh, today we currently have nothing in the ordinance regarding food trucks. And what we're trying to do with this ordinance is to provide some framework for somebody who wants to open up a, uh, a food truck or a food court to know that they need a permit. What has to be on the information they give us for the permit? Inspections sanitation uh, and knowing what information that we're going to be looking at when we go and inspect food trucks and food courts. Um, it also provides for operating regulations and it, it, it will help us get a handle on, I don't even know how many food trucks are out there today, I could not tell you. I could not tell you if they're abiding by, uh, the, whether they're really temporary uses uh, whether they are there leaving after 12 hours, they're supposed to go back to the commissary, <coughs> clean up, come back. We have no idea about that. We do not have the ability today, I, I would say, is that if our health inspector is going by and going by a food truck and wants to conduct an, an inspection to make sure everything is doing, uh, everything is right and being done the right way, um, they may be able to refuse us to refuse to do that. This prevents that. If our health inspector wants to come up and knock on the door and take a look, they have to let them in. They have to uh, display their Oklahoma sales tax permit on the window so we know that they are complying with the law. All these things are the reason why we're doing this ordinance. And in case you have any uh, technical questions, Erica Sharkey of the Texas County Health Department is here. Uh, Larry Maslar, who is our uh, health inspector, is also here this evening, should you have any questions of them. Well, I've got one. I read the ordinance and, and I, I may have missed something or maybe it's the intent, but there's very little, there's very little connection between our ordinance and the state health department and state state standards mm -hmm. I mean to me our deal doesn't uh, says you got to 
the one deal is on uh, the truck's got to be have a suitable interior that can be washed and cleaned, but it doesn't address three compartment sinks, water storage, wastewater storage, a lot of the other things. So, with, will this work hand in hand with the state deal, or our, our, our ordinance can't reduce the state standard? Right. So if a state standard is more restrictive, it's got to be complied with. I guess, do we need language in there that, that, that part of our standards are the same as the state or that we don't? No, it doesn't. It, 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 that it's in, in, in force anyway, whether you say that or not. The state standard takes the state, precedence. Yeah, the state <coughs> standard, you, you, can't, you can't eliminate a state standard. Okay. Now the health officer that you mentioned, that's going okay. to be our health officer, or is that going to be the state's? Um, Larry Maslar is our health officer today. So when he goes out and inspects them, he is also, he has other criteria other than what is in this, this ordinance that he looks at to make sure it meets the standards of what we have to enforce. When Erica goes out and, and inspects, she has a book and a standard that she is looking at to make sure they meet state standards. Um, <clears throat> if they are if they are cooking Larry, food, Larry's not our health officer. We don't have a health officer. I apologize about that, but I know he <clears throat> he goes out and does inspect us, but he's not a health officer. Um, I guess my question. We just want to make something that we have on the books that tells people and the public that we care about their health, safety, and welfare. We want to make sure that if there is, um, if there is a food truck that is cooking food, hamburgers, using grease, we want to make sure that they're using a grease trap. We want to make sure they're not putting uh, grease, water, sewer into our, our sewage systems where they, where they shouldn't. We want to make sure they have a fire suppression system so that if one of our citizens goes up and buys something, we want to make sure that, every, that this is being operated the way it's supposed to be. And this is one more tool in the toolbox for us to ensure that. So it's, is, there a, is there a checklist that's done, say, when you visit a food truck for the first time, or they just have to abide by this ordinance? Or is there a, a checklist of some sort? Uh, through you, Mayor, we don't really have a checklist. So when we go through the door, we check things off. Now, we know what we're supposed to look for. So it, it is, it, it, in terms of an actual checklist, no. But we know we have to look at mechanical. We have to look at plumbing. We have to Does look the at owner of that food truck get a copy of this checklist? That way they can have everything in compliance next time you come through yes they are told where, where they're deficient <clears throat> and what has to be brought nothing's added state. on later on that checklist is the checklist but we don't let them operate until they fix it okay so if we go in and do an inspection and under this new ordinance if they are not abiding by the code we have the ability to revoke their life their permit Perfect. until they correct it I would think that the first thing that we would be checking is to whether or not the state has inspected them. Yeah. Let me clarify. Larry's not our health <coughs> officer. He doesn't, he doesn't inspect like a house officer would on food prep. So we don't have a, anybody from the city, I don't know if they ever had for food prep, but he is the code official as far as uh, how it's put together, permitting and, and stuff like that. So there's, there's inspections that we do, but there's a difference in is the food the right temperature versus do they have the right electrical stuff? And Larry can speak. I would do more of the building, plumbing, mechanical, electrical inspections of these units. Uh, as far as do they have a suppression system? Is there electrical meet our, our city codes? It, it is considered a commercial kitchen, so it will abide by our ICC codes. Um, and every city I've ever, every jurisdiction I've worked in, we do require certain plumbing and mechanical and electrical uh, fire safety 
on these food wagons. And most of the newer ones have all this in place. Um, I've seen some older units in town that I don't see uh, a suppression system in them. And that scares the heck out of me. I'm not a, I don't do the fire safety, you know, life safety things, but uh, I do know what that is in our codes. It's in our fire codes. It's in our um, <coughs> building codes, our mechanical codes. And not having a suppression system in a food wagon, uh, you couldn't get out of there fast enough uh, if, if it lit up. Um, so we have a lot of, it's all life safety for me. Um, and we would check these things. Are there propane bottles stored right? Are they, it, I, I do more of this area than the health part. And I, Mr. Clapsidel was right. I would go in and do an inspection. I, I am not, he just was misinterpreting building and health as well. All of so it seems to me like this ordinance, we need to, we need to separate ourselves from the state. So we just need to inspect the functionality right. of the food truck and the state does the food inspection. Let me have Eric get talk to you. We'll is that correct? What you look at when you go out. So what is your question? Well, if we need to separate this board. Hold that down. <laughs> we have a step stool. Somebody get her a chair. <laughs> Just joking. This ordinance, since we already abide by Oklahoma, by Oklahoma ordinance for food uh, preparation, I don't know what the name is. And this ordinance we just we would need just a structural ordinance we don't if we're not if we don't have a health inspector I, on the city what i would really need is some help with the compliance of it because what our state code is is like mr petty said state of trumps <coughs> over what city says city can always be stricter than state but whenever i go and enforce the 12 hour rule i need help because those mobile trucks don't want to move and chalking tires at nine o'clock at night really is not what i plan on doing um, so that's really what I, I think needs to be in there. They need, to, you know, they need to be able to move. They're mobile. That's the purpose of them, is to move. Um, and it's not to dump your wastewater all over the ground or bring food from home or nothing like that because I don't allow that anywhere. So why should I allow that there? Um, it's just to kind of help you guys as well to understand that you guys, they're coming into town and to kind of keep, keep it all up to the same standard. But, I mean, you got Does this affect like uh, trailers that are you know that are pulled in? You know, not just not. A I won't let like a for instance. I don't let somebody from Kansas come to Oklahoma without a license, right. unless you're coming to a temporary event. Then anybody who's allowed at a temporary event, they still have to meet the same requirements. They still got to get a permit. Yeah, I issue temporary now licenses. What about somebody? Oh, you do. Tries to set a trailer permanently. Um, you cannot be permanently plumbed or electrical. You cannot be a permanent structure. If you're going to be a permanent, you have to be a brick and mortar, and you have to have a brick and mortar uh, toilet facility, <coughs> restroom. So you have to meet the same standard. You got to have the mop sink. You got to have a, everything that we require for a construction guideline for a permanent building. If you're going to be permanently plumbed and stuff like that. So we need this because we. We, we've got. We all I have a mobile we've construction got. guide that you guys can feed off of, yeah. and it would be the kind of the same concept. You, I mean, but I mean, you see food trucks everywhere, everywhere yeah. you go, every city you go. It seems like there's a food truck. Right. So, are those food trucks conforming to standards? Also, or I mean, I know you can't speak for that, but what your thoughts, you like your thoughts, like you think every truck has a permit, every truck has. Uh, I go in and ask if they have a permit. And if they don't, they can, they can go. They're supposed to put the permit on the um, We've actually just allowed them to have it inside of their mobile because if they put it up in their window, it does fade. So if it's stuck to the refrigerator and then it's accessible, if somebody comes in and says, hey, do you have a permit? And they can grab it rather than going home. What's a yearly permit person. cost? Um, our fees went up October 1st. They are 425 
425 for a mobile there across the board, any food establishment, and then it's 425 for a plane review. 425 for what? For a plan review. So if somebody comes to town that has, doesn't have a license with the state, then they have to submit a plan review to me and I have to accept it or deny it. So, question I'd have. So, with this <coughs> ordinance and with, with, with the state, with what you work with, do you, I guess my question, will you be able to intertwine and work together? Will they, will they complement each other? Um, I believe so. I think it would actually help. I, I think it would help in the long term because you have to change the mindset of how everybody operates anyway because coming from somebody that's been here for 32 years the previous man that was in my position and he didn't enforce anything and then i come here and i'm trying to clean up the work it would help if i had some other type of outside help rather than just going to my legal every time to try to help me in pursuing getting compliance But this in no shape or form, we're not trying to do away with food trucks. They just have to conform to standards. Yes and no. I mean, it really depends on what you guys are requiring for them to have. We're just re requiring them to have a license and, and be up to code. I agree. And they're in the right zoning. But you go, you, if you're going to start comparing here to there, then compare what Oklahoma City or Tulsa, Tulsa has because they have two different entities. Right. So they're they're separate. So what they require and what they're getting at, I think that we should do that as well than going extremes. And I've actually kind of did some research. We don't they don't require fire suppression system or hood suppression systems in Oklahoma City. In Oklahoma Tulsa. City, right? No, I've asked, but if that's in the fire marshal code, by all means, I'm not going to overstep my boundaries. But I checked. I don't want to make somebody go spend all that money whenever they could go outside of town. We, we also want to make sure that whatever <coughs> somebody can bring for a permit, we have the ability to ask them for a site plan. Where is the truck going to be on the lot? Do you have a letter of approval from the landowner? Is it going to be placed in a parking spot that's needed for the business? We want to make sure they're kept out of the right of way. We want to make sure that they have um, allow free access into the parking lot. Today, we don't have any of that. We do not have a way or a mechanism to have them come in and do it. So that is where it helps out. I don't think we're crossing lines at all with the state. In fact, we work together a lot to make sure that, that, that food trucks are going to try to operate correctly. I would say that I would like the food court to be on my side yeah. and then the mechanical and everything to be on their side. Yeah, man. Because I don't go in and doing everybody else's job. So I would appreciate it if I get the same back. Because I don't go in and say you got to throw your food away. It's really hard for me to throw food away. I can't physically throw food away. Nobody wants that liability. So we don't have it. They, I can't touch it and say, I can sit now, I can sit there and count it and say, <laughs> yeah, I threw it away. But I can't. Grab it and go, you gotta throw that away. Okay. The other, the other comment I would say on the fire suppression, we also have a fire marshal that certainly could assist in inspecting those units to make sure that they're compliant with the fire suppression. Goes, goes I don't believe those have been checked. In every jurisdiction I've worked in, uh, when you do food truck inspection, the fire marshal goes with me and he does his Excellent. side of it my side of it and then we have our great health and our state um, health. Yeah, great um, a lot of work together a lot yep <coughs> good how much does something like that cost miss truck <laughs> yeah like the fire suppression real scary really expensive no huh? yeah, but they're around five grand two to two to five more like three Three to like more than the, more than the taco truck. Yes. The problem is, life safety issues doesn't care about prices of you know, you know, when people's lives are at stake. Um, it's kind of hard to put a price on that. I understand. <clears throat> Any other questions? Discussion? I want to table item seven. I want to make a motion that we table item seven. 
May I, would there be any specific items that we would, you would like us to, to address um, in the meantime before we come back? Let's get it to I, want, I want to make sure we get it the way you want it. Yep, we can talk. Okay. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Sorry, who seconded? Sean. Thank you, though. Thank you for all the info. Sean seconded. Crone? Nay. Swiker? Nay. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. Peterson? I'm going to say nay. Got three nays and two ayes. I'll make a motion that we approve ordinance number 827, re regulating food truck and food truck sales and court operations. I'll second it. Have a motion to second. Oh. Yeah. Motions. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry, you made the second. Mr. I Crone. did. Crone. And the mayor. Nay. Living good? Nay. Swager? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have two nays and three ayes. Thank you. Agenda item number eight is discussion and possible action to. Oh, we need oh, to we emergency. declare emergency. That didn't happen if you don't declare it. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion that we de declare ordinance number 827 an emergency. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Nay. Living Good? Nay. Swaker? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have three ayes and two nays. Agenda item eight. The discussion and possible action to approve the fraternal order of police lodge number 125 union agreement for FY fiscal year 2018. Thank you, Mayor. I have a handout uh, for you to show you the differences between the uh, existing contract and the <laughs> in the proposed <laughs> agreement. This agreement has been ratified by the uh, fraternal order of police, and I'm very pleased to present it to you tonight. Um, you know, we have, we're having uh, continual problems with recruiting and retaining police officers, and I think this is a step in the right direction. Um, if you look through the changes, they fall in primarily two categories. Uh, the first one would be that uh, many times our officers aren't able to take vacation or use their comp time, and we are making changes to the contract that will reimburse them during the course of the, course of the year for <coughs> unused comp time or vacation time at, that, at their discretion. And the other change in the contract has to do with implementing a new pay plan. Uh, it's a very basic pay plan. Uh, it has uh, several steps that, and you have a copy of that pay plan in your attachment. It's basically a 50 cent increase in the hourly rate every two years. So. We think in, during the first year, uh, the cost of implementing the plan will be about $25,000, but over the course of uh, several years, that cost will be spread out incrementally. Uh, not everyone in the department will move to the next step every year. So we think it's a step in the right direction, and it shows our commitment to the police department, and it shows uh, officers that come to work for the city of Guymon that they have an opportunity to, to grow their careers here and uh, they have an opportunity to experience some salary adjustments over time. So I would recommend that we approve it. And I want to thank uh, Dale for all of his uh, hard work in negotiating the terms of this new agreement. Any questions? I, one other thing I'd like to point out on the on the payback, um, we think this is a benefit for both the officer and the city because it reduces our future liabilities. Um, if you think about how leave time is earned, uh, you you earn your leave at a current rate of pay, and then at some point in the future you get reimbursed for it. So we think it's a benefit to the city to reimburse that earned leave current at current rate of pay versus a future rate of pay. So I think over time we're, we're providing um, a benefit to the police officer and we're uh, 
reducing our future liabilities. Longevity pay has always been part of the agreement, right? Yes. Okay. Any other any questions, discussion? I make a motion that we approve the fraternal order of police lodge number 125 union agreements for fiscal year 2018 item A. I'll second it. Have a motion and second. Swiger. Aye. Living good. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Crone. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We have five eyes. Thank you. Did item number nine is reports and comments from the city manager and council member? Uh, all I have is uh, a request from the chief to address the council. I just, I just want to tell everybody we're doing a uh, Halloween drive through at the station. Um, the fire club has donated some money to get people through the station, let them look at it. So if you have time, bring your kids out, bring your nieces, nephews, whoever you got, bring them out. And, uh, the, it won't block the station at all. We're going to have it trafficked off and coned off, and the guys have been working hard on it. So I think it should be a good event. So, And if you see a big six-foot, seven-foot minion around, take a picture with them and put it on Facebook, and maybe you'll win some stuff. Make sure you open the doors all the way, too. <laughs> any other any comments? Uh, that's no? all I have. I don't have anything. Uh, I'll go. Go ahead. Uh, we're getting into budget season. Our revenues are down. And I just want people to be aware that we might have to do some cost cutting. And so if for some reason, you know, we have to lower some uh, lower things that we you normally cover every year uh, it's just because our revenues are down and substantially over the last two years so just want to put that out so everybody's aware okay shop local <clears throat> yeah, shop local that's right yeah. um, I have a couple the other night Becky Baggerly was named the F. Heiner Dale citizen of the year and next week uh, the Oklahoma Water Resources Board has the annual governor's water conference. The Iman, we were the third city in the state, I think, that, that ever borrowed any money through the revolving fund. And they've asked me to sit on a round table and be a speaker and talk about what water does for Guyman, what our future plans for water are, and some things like that. So we're also have got, uh, I've got several appointments set up to talk with DEQ and some water gurus about our possible water reuse program that we've been working on. <clears throat> Any other reports or comments? Agenda item number 10 is to consider executive session for confidential review of the IBTS contract with the City of Guyana and pursuant to 25 Oklahoma Statutes 2011 subsection 307B4 like a motion we go into executive session. Second. I have a motion and a second. Swager. Aye. Living good. Aye. Crone. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We have five eyes. We will convene to executive session. Do I have a, mo I have have a motion? motion? We reconvene. Second. I have a motion and a second to reconvene. Swager. Aye. Living good. Aye. Crone. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We have five eyes. We'll reconvene. No action was taken. Agenda item number 11, new business. No. If, if, if so, we'll stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody, for coming. <clears throat>